from the Huddersfield Giants, led out by Kevin Brown. They'll be absolutely full of confidence coming into this game, a comprehensive victory over the Castleford Tigers last Friday evening. And, well, one man who will really need to be watched carefully is Luke George, who was just simply called the hat-trick man this season. He's been really unstoppable. Here come the Robins, Rufus leading the side out. And the skipper, Michael Dobson, wearing that scrum cap once again. She wore last weekend down in Perpignan. Looks as though it's going to be the Robins who will kick this game off. Attacking from left to right, the head and road end of the ground. And what's really noticeable as we await the arrival of Steve Ganson, I think you touched on it, Dan. Craig Standercock really has gone for some size on the bench today. Yeah, I think the, the name of the game, as we said, is going to be defence today, Rob. And not only that, I think we need to match Huddersfield set for set if we're going to have any chance of, get, of, of toppling them today. Hopefully, I mean, they've, they've been on fire from minute one this season. Hopefully, they'll, they'll have an off day, perhaps, and, and there's a chance for us there. So it's Scott Morell to get this game underway. He'll strike the ball right-footed. Lots of distance on the opening kick of the game, fielded by the Huddersfield Giants. And Lan Patrick takes the first drive in, and he's met 14 metres from the Huddersfield Giants line. Here they come with their first exit set, but enthusiastic defence from the Robins. It was Liam Watts leading the way. Here's the man who really does uh, typify the name Giants in this Huddersfield lineup. Big Earl Crabtree, but he couldn't make too much purchase on that drive as Michael Lawrence takes tackle number four good opening set defensively for Rovers so far Huddersfield immediately electing to kick through the boots of Scott Griggs and uh, that's a nice easy bounce for Shannon McDonnell McDonnell just eyes up the Huddersfield defensive line, takes the tackle nine metres inside the Robins half and uh, Rovers went okay on that opening set Yeah, stand their authority on that one Rob, um, real good Good, good defensive line speed and good technique as well. Nobody slips off a tackle in that set. That boards well for the rest of the game, hopefully. Sam Leiters plays the ball and Withers crosses halfway. He looks right, but then goes into the two-man tackle. Rovers a centre field with Wielden. He had a good dig last week down in the south of France. He carried the ball well and worked hard defensively. Rovers are midway inside the Giants half, what would they give for an early score? Morell dinks the kick through, it should be a comfortable one for Greg Eden, the former Castleford Tiger, he scored against his former club last week, so he'll be brimming with confidence, and the Giants now look to clear the line with Jermaine McGilvray, but so far so good, we've played just coming up to two minutes, and uh, well, both sides are just testing each other out really. Yeah, just sounding each other out, seeing what they made of. Wasn't the best end to the set from the Rovers, but it was the end of the set, which is always good, I suppose. And you're at that end of the pitch. Danny Bruff with a, a speculative kick from it, deep in his own half for a 40-20, but that Danny Bruff's kicks can get you out of trouble, Rob, and that's just a fantastic kick so far. Really turn the Robins round and, and see if they can bring it out from their own end now. Yeah, I think the concern from Shannon McDonnell then was whether that one would go for a 40-20. It then bounced in field, and it was uh, causing him a little bit of trouble, but it allowed the Huddersfield chase to come up field and... Hence, Rovers are only 30 metres away from their own line now. Lincoln Withers just goes into dummy half, tells Chris Wallam to move back into that centre position. This is where the game needs to be really won and lost for Rovers. The forwards have got to really uh, dent some holes in this Huddersfield defensive line. That's great work from Clinton. Was strong in the collision and uh, managed to gain another few metres forward. The kick was from Scott Morell, it's a decent one. Just goes the wrong side of the post as far as the Robins are concerned. But it's a 20 metre restart for the Huddersfield Giants. I'll just quickly take this opportunity to say hello to Gary Floyd down in Perth, Western Australia, who's a subscriber to HullKR.tv. I hope you're enjoying the games, Gary, and uh, all your friends from the East Stand say a big hello. Huddersfield in possession once again. Yeah, another completed set for Rovers. You can't really ask much more of them at this time of the this stage of the game. Early doors, Robert. Just set completion and, and good defence. As we 
It's Joe Wardle with the line break. Luke George will have a 30 metre stroll in. David Hodgson won't have the pace to catch him. And the Huddersfield Giants, with their real first attack of any real note, have gone in around three minutes, 40 seconds played. And Rovers trail by four points to nil. And, well, just it was a nothing pass out wide in fairness, Dan. The line break was by Joe Wardle. He just had the simple task of finding his wingman. And Luke George continues on this absolutely amazing try-scoring form. Yeah, you've got to ask questions of the fringe defence there, at the edge of defence rather for the Robins. There was, there was nothing in there really. He ran a bit of an angle, but nothing spectacular. Nothing, Greg, it's not like it was a Greg English running the angle there. It was pretty straightforward pass and run really. And yeah, that, that was a bit weak if you ask me, Rob. Dif uh, disappointing really, because it was such a good start in defence for Rovers. But like we say, defend from them. Um, you defend from, from uh, anywhere on the pitch because Huddersfield can score from anywhere on the pitch. Well, the Rovers players are just having a committee meeting behind the post. They'll be really disappointed. As we said, they had looked fairly comfortable defensively so far. The only positive is that Danny Bruff has been pushed really out wide for the conversion attempt. But the downside is, is he is one of the best kickers in the Super League. As he has just proven, that one sails between the posts and Rovers trail by six points to nil. The East End makes some noise to try and rally their troops, but... That's just the start Craig Sandercock was looking to avoid. Yeah, it was just sloppy one-on-one -on -one defence, really, Rob. Um, I think the two players that were, that were sort of duty-bound to bring the player down just switched off, left him for each other, and, and that at this, this level of the game is not really acceptable for me. Well, the Rovers fans wanting the knock-on from the restart. Eventually, Steve Ganson gives a signal. Just should just also mention that both sides playing in these red and white sport relief socks today great gesture from the RFL that all 14 sides including Hull FC will have to wear red and white to, for this round of fixtures so uh, this is a great opportunity now against the side in the form and with the confidence of Huddersfield it's important that you hit straight back Rovers now have the opportunity to do so they set up the position with that drive which takes them 10 metres out from the Huddersfield line. Here comes a strong looking run from Scott Wielden. Takes four men to hold him up. Lincoln Withers will be looking for Dobson now. Here is the scrum half. That's a good pass. There's a chance for overs out wide. Sam Latus did well to take the pass in furnace. And that hesitation has allowed Huddersfield just to bundle him into such a metre short. And well, had that pass gone to his midriff there, Dan, he would have scored. Yeah, it was a pass from McDonnell. He came into the line really well and it looked all, all, all the world. There was going to be a score in the corner. Just uh, not the best of passes. I think he was maybe fumbling with the ball a little bit as he tried to control it. Um, and the wing, it was Hodgson, I think, actually. Did his, did his best to try and get over there, but good cover defence from Huddersfield. But if you're going to send the ball over, Rob, this is the place to do it, I suppose. Indeed, it was the former Huddersfield man. Sam Latis is on the right wing, Hodgson on the left. So, uh, well, I'm sure David Hodgson would have been relishing that chance, but... I think the final pass was the uh, the thing there, and what a shot that was! May have been uh, Josh Hodgson who was the strongest in the collision. Then he's come away limping rather worryingly as Josh Hodgson is uh, just lined up alongside Steve Ganson. It may just be one that he can run off 40 20 attempts again from the left boot of Danny Bruff, awkwardly trapped by Shannon McDonnell. He skips between the half tackle of Joe Wardle. Rovers looking to get on the front foot. Latus wrapped up as Rovers are just a couple of metres shy of halfway. Mika just throws a big dummy, wants to get the offload away but can't do so because of the tackle of Earl Crabtree. That slowed the play, the ball down. Here's Watts now linking up the play. Hodgson skips away from Danny Bruff. Almost managed to free his ball carrying arm he was looking to get the pass away to Chris Wellham wheeled on it once again with the drive it looks as though he was going to lose that ball in the collision last sackle say Steve Ganson as Rovers switch the play the boot high is from Dobson it's in the sun Wellham oh he's done well as well that's gone loose oh Rovers may well have scored here it will have been the pressure from Chris Wellham 
which has allowed the Robins to score. The fullback Greg Eden was in all sorts of problem. The Huddersfield Giants lose the ball. A Rovers have scored. I'm not too sure who got the touchdown, but importantly, it's under the sticks. It may be David Hodgson against his former side. We'll confirm in just a second, but that's what the Robins needed, Dan. Yeah, exactly what we were saying prior to the game, Rob. He's a young lad. He's, he's a, I mean, he's a great prospect, Greg Eden. But you've got to, you've got to test them, and you've got to see what he can come up with. And on that occasion, he came up with a catch, but had an absolute brain explosion trying to ground the ball in play so that he wasn't tackled behind the line for a, a, a goal line dropout. Lost the ball, and, and Rovers great chase. You've got to credit him with that, and, and grounded the ball for a try. Just, just take the tackle and get the drop kick out. That's someone like Danny Brough. He can clear it 50 yards for you anyway. So Dobson will be enjoying this one just to the left of the uprights. We've still to confirm the scorer. Don't, I'm not sure Neil Rudd even knows yet. Dobson's drilled that one between the posts. It's six points apiece. We've played just coming up to nine and a half minutes. And it was important that Rovers hit back and hit back they have. You have to say the kick was a great one from Dobson, but it was the chase of Chris Wellham which created that try. Liam Watts has been the man awarded the try. So Huddersfield with the restart. It was in the sun. Dobson did well to take that one in. And that's uh, just put the buzz back amongst the fans. They were stunned by that Huddersfield score, which was an easy one in fairness, but the Robins have shown some character to get back to six points apiece, and they have the ball once again. Joe Clinton's carrying the ball strongly. Yeah, we've seen a completely different player this season in Joe Clinton, haven't we? A real big point to prove. He said by his own very, very high standards last year, he had a shocker of a season, blighted by injury, of course, but it is you who's just raring to go this year, and Robbie's looks to go wide again through Dobson. Great ball finds Wellham out wide. The Huddersfield defence was scrambling. They managed to bring the ginger ninja down 32 metres out. Once again, Dobson goes to the sky. Blustery conditions out there, but this time it was a safe take from Luke George, but an eager chase from the red and white shirt have taken the silver-shirted Huddersfield to within 15 metres of their own line. Important now that Rovers don't concede a silly penalty. Here's Michael Lawrence, centre field, in this unaccustomed second row position. He's a big enough guy, he's about six foot two, is Michael Lawrence. Once again, Kevin Brown out wide, big collision with Scott Morell. Morell goes for the second bite of the sherry, but, well, the alarm bells are ringing. Huddersfield think there's a weakness on the Rovers' right. And Luke George once again pops the ball inside superbly to Wardle. Great link with Scott Griggs. He puts on the banners. He'll score in the left-hand corner once again. Rovers fans are appealing for the forward pass. It doesn't come from Steve Ganson. 12 minutes played and Huddersfield score their second try of the game. Griggs the scorer and they lead by 10 points to six. Yeah, I'm... I'm well, we set out in a game, don't we, Rob, to try and say very little about the referee, if possible, but they, they just bring it on. That I'm sorry, but that, that first pass to set, um, I think it was to set Lawrence away out here, was the guy that took the ball, he wasn't even expecting it because he knew he was stood in front of his, his teammate, so that's uh, disappointing for me. The, the players work hard enough to not have it undone by, by, by referees and other officials. The linesman was stood right there as well, that's a bit, of a, a bit poor for me. So from virtually an identical position, Danny Bruff once again is lining up the conversion. Two Huddersfield attacks down the Rovers' right-hand channel has resulted in two tries. I think Craig Sandercock may just need to take a look at that. Rovers have been identified as having a weakness there. Danny Bruff lines up the conversion. Oh, that looks a great kick from the scrum half. The flags go up. 12-6 to Huddersfield. They're looking to go back to the top of the Stowback table. Rovers currently in 10th. But a long way to go in this game, Dan. But certainly we can't afford Huddersfield to cut loose every time they move the ball down this side. 
No, Rovers forward pass or not, they still need to then they still need to front up on this um, right edge because Huddersfield have identified it in the score twice already, Rob. So Huddersfield once again immediately move the ball wide. Lan Patrick taking on Sam Latis who coming from that wing position. Lawrence now goes down underneath the three man tackle. Approaching the midway point in the Huddersfield half. Earl Crabtree loses that ball in the collision. Great collision. Good hit from Joel Clinton. Things like that can just swing the momentum back your way. Yeah, great footwork from Earl Crabtree, but in doing so, it was a bit of a loose carry, and, and Clinton just, just targeted the ball, Rob. He put a shot on the ball, because, um, let's be honest, you put a shot on Earl Crabtree, you probably come off second best, no matter how big you are. Um, put a shot on the ball, and now hopefully Rovers, like we say, go set for set with Huddersfield, and um, keep, keep them within range on the scoreboard. Here's Graham Horn now. Well, if, if they are targeting this right-hand side, they'll certainly know plenty about Horn. Spent the last couple of seasons in Huddersfield colours. With us now, he's around 16, 17 metres out, just to the right-hand side of the post. Morell injecting some pace. Conmika steps, get the ball inside. With us with the dummy. Goes down underneath the tackle of Crabtree, but Rovers with the chance to respond once again. Dobson, the standing off the scrum half. That looks forward to Josh Hodgson. Ganson allows the play to continue. Rovers come back to the open side. There's some space for Morell. Conmika now, strong, powerful guy. That was a great tackle by the Huddersfield Giants. It was Kevin Brown, I do believe, not renowned for his defence. The kick from Dobson is bouncing. And it's gone into the Huddersfield hands. And then there's a penalty for offside against the Robins. So Steve Ganson with a really relieving penalty for the Giants. They would have been asking them to do the hard yards. But that kick from Bruff has made... Well, almost 35, 36 metres, what a kick. And Huddersfield will cross halfway in the space of a couple of tackles. Yeah, it's like we're saying, Rob, the boat of Danny Bruff can get them out of any trouble. Um, they've just got to be disciplined in their defence, not give silly penalties away. We'll see how many offsides we see in the rest of the game, but yeah, he's given it now, so let's get on with it. The Giants on halfway with Earl Crabtree. We've played... Just over 16 minutes once again, they're coming down this side. Latus needs to tackle Luke George, he's done so. 30 metres out, but when Huddersfield attack, it's with real power and pace. Oh, Wardle just bounced through the defensive line. Eventually went down under the tackle of Graham Horn. Danny Bruff now, he kicks, he looks and he saw that there were two or three Huddersfield chasers. It's bounced kindly for Hulkingston Rovers. Chris Wellen pouches the ball in. But whereas when Rovers are down in the Huddersfield 20, you're expecting, you, well, you're rather hoping rather than expecting something to happen. When Huddersfield get down here, you are expecting points to be scored, and now Rovers have knocked on, and it's a scrum down head and feed to the Giants. Yeah, you can say that's an error, but Danny Bruff again he pulled the ball out one on one, ball at the ground, and the Rovers player regained it. Six and two threes, it could have gone either way, Rob. But just going on the on the edge defence for the Robins, it's actually the inside men that aren't coming over and giving the winger in the centre any help at all. They've gone short side, that was a surprise employ. Almost paid dividends for the Giants, but now they're stacked up on this left-hand side. It's with Leroy Kudjo. Really has been in good form. This man has fantastic footwork. And the Giants now are only 10 metres out as Grix collects that pass. The numbers out wide if Brown can get the ball free. Rovers did well defensively, it was Graham Horn, but they've come the same way. Oh, and that's poor defence. And the Giants have reached over and scored. And you have to say, Greg Eden should never, never have been allowed to touch that ball down. Rovers had the numbers, it was just sloppy one-on-one -on -one defence. We've played 18 minutes. And the Giants now lead by 16 points to six. And already this game is in danger of slipping away. Yeah, it's a big problem, Rob. Uh, it's a big, big problem for me because they've not done anything anywhere else on the park and we know they can do. So they're just going to keep bringing it this way until, until the Rovers decide to make a tackle down there. It's not good enough, is it? Like I say, it's, we, we, we're quick to criticise the winger in the centre, but 
from what I've seen so far, the, the numbers that Hudd Huddersfield have got ready to run at that area of the park. Rovers should be looking up and numbering up as well because they had three and four runners ready then and just a winger, a centre and a second row man just waiting to be picked off. Bruff's around 19 metres out, it's about nine metres in from touch. He's already kicked two more difficult ones than this, so the sensible money would be on him. Tagging the third kick of the afternoon over from that trusty left boot, he duly obliges. 18-6 the Robins trail. It's not an insurmountable scoreline, but as you say, Huddersfield have not been startling and have scored three tries. Yeah, they've just they've just recognised um, identified a weakness, Rob, and, and they're just targeting it every time. But you've got to say, Rovers are not really making them work for their points at all. You can't give cheap cheap points away against teams like Huddersfield. That third try came from the Rovers' knock-on, so that just shows you if you lose possession inside your own danger zone, the odds will say that you will concede points. So Rovers now they'll be looking for a way to claw the way back into this game now. It's with McGilvery over on that far side. <laughs> Giants now just coming down the centre of the field. Big collision once again. Joel Clinton standing strong for the Robins. We're approaching that time of the game where both coaches will be looking at substitutions as once again Huddersfield create the overlap. Luke George offloads to Kevin Brown. The Rovers fans wanting the forward pass. Play on, say the officials. Scott Gricks this time with the kick. Dobson's over there defending. He takes it despite the pressure of Leroy Kudjo, who has a second go at the Rovers captain. That upset one or two of the East Standers. David Hodgson skips through a couple of half tackles. Quick play the ball. Huddersfield looks offside, but Rovers, they've just not got the same pace as Huddersfield when they've got ball in hand. No, we thought it was going to be a battle in the forwards, didn't we, Rob? But Huddersfield are not really utilising that, that middle player. They're just going straight to that flank and they're, they're having success with it every single time, whether they're scoring tries or not. They're making big, big metres. The Robins are on the last, so they'll ask Scott Morell to kick downfield. That's a good take from Luke George, not the best of kicks from Morell. George looks to take on Graham Horn. Morell, the man who put that kick in, has eventually completed the tackle. Rovers just look guilty of standing off and admiring these Huddersfield players, these ball carriers. They need to get in and start knocking them down. Ganson was rather generous to Rovers there, who looked as though they'd encroached by a yard or so. Here's David Filongo. Nine metres inside Rovers' territory. Danny Bruff just measures the kick over. Shannon McDonald with a decision to make. He has to play it and he's been trapped in goal. He should have made that decision sooner. The pace on the ball was clearly stopping. And for me, that was just the wrong decision from the fullback. Yeah, he probably made the wrong call on that, that occasion, Rob. It's a difficult one, isn't it? It's always a. Uh... Especially when you've got, again, kickers of the calibre of Brown and Bruff, they can stop the ball on a sixpence, so it's a, it's a tough call, but yeah, he's, he's made the wrong one there. Well, let's put the Phil Clark theory to the test, because he says that a large percentage of tries are scored when sides earn repeat sets. Hopefully that won't be the case in this one. That's a decent kick from Dobson, makes around 38 yards. Filongo, big man, big collision there with Con Mika. But once again, it's this quick play the ball. El Crabtree, he's playing decent minutes so far. He'll play the ball to the former Hull man, Tommy Lee. He moves the ball to the right hand side. Bruff with the step inside. Sloppy defence. Poor offload from Huddersfield. Knock on. So Rovers have survived that repeat set by the skin of their teeth because once again the line was broken far too easily yeah it was Rob uh, McDonald making up for his error and giving the drop out away with a good one on one final ditch tackle there and um, luckily for Rovers the, the, the offload was just forced a little bit that'll probably annoy Nathan Brown because all coaches say don't they offload at the right times don't force the offload but again he won't be too disappointed where they've turned the ball over yep Rovers have got lots of hard yards to make Dobson feeds the scrum and it's out Wellham. Rovers want to see the ball in his hands, but at the other end of the field where his try scoring prowess 
can come into effect. Huddersfield a mile offside as that ball was played. Well, obviously it's not just Hus that saw that because the fans are appealing to the officials also. Just under 16 minutes of the first half remaining. If Rovers can get within six points of Huddersfield, there's something to work on in the second half. Liam Watts wants support. He finds it from Dobson. That was good play from Rovers. Who'll play the ball on halfway. Morell looking to spread the play wide. Jordan Cox, that's a good first touch from the substitute. Con Mika and Joel Clinton are taking breathers. Well, Cox is certainly one of the men who's come on as Dobson finds Josh Hodgson. That's a far too deep a kick from Hodgson. Not quite sure what he intended there. It will be OK in terms of field position, but I think Rovers had Huddersfield on the back foot then. No, I don't think Craig Sandercock will take anything positive out of that, Rob, because that was an absolutely shocking play. Um, you don't like to criticise, but we had a man over on the outside and just get the ball through hands. They've done the hard work getting down there and just the execution of the kick and everything was just so wrong. Mickey Payer was the other man to be introduced from the bench as Huddersfield once again employ that short side attack and it almost pays dividends. This Jermaine McGilvery is such a squat, powerful winger very strong lad indeed and he made some good yards and on the back of that Rovers have managed to form the defensive line and now they're rushing in and they've gone back to what they started in those first few minutes but the Giants have offloaded and Earl Crabtree's got space to run into great tackle by Jordan Cox but once again the quick play the ball Kevin Brown picking holes in the Rovers defensive line with that pass back on the inside Rovers have scrambled well. Breath now. Steps one, steps twice. Can't beat the tackle of. I think it was Liam Watts. It... Scott Griggs this time with the kick ahead. Should be a comfortable one for the fullback, McDonnell. He's tackled 15 metres out from the Robins line. And well, you have to say that on these opening 25, 26 minutes, the, the Giants who were really controlling this game. Hence, they lead by 18 points to six at this stage. Yeah, it's a good good, good recovery from the Robins there. Like you say, they got into the tackle nice and quickly and good and strong, but there's three men in there and he still managed to, to force an offload away, so that'll be worrying. We've got to wrap the ball up because teams like Huddersfield will score off a single offload. David Hodgson, so he just took a knock as he uh, was... Held up by the two-man tackle, short side Rovers, it's the kick from Dobson, will that drift out on the full? It sails out, that's poor from the Rovers skipper. And when you're 12 points down on the scoreboard, that's the last thing you need. You need to ask questions of Huddersfield defensively. Instead, what could have been a tackle completed on their 20 or a scrum? Huddersfield have the ball, just what, nine metres from halfway. Ganson pushes them back an extra metre as Earl Crabtree takes a breather for the Giants. Yeah, we said early on, didn't we, Rob, that to, 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 any, to do anything like compete with Huddersfield, you've got to be near 100% in your game. As, um, I think there's, a, there's where Love Rovers should be looking at Michael Lawrence playing in the second row because he does not look confident at all. I mean, he's, he's lightweight to play that position anyway. They've obviously gone for him for his pace, but he, he, he doesn't look like he's got the bottle to play in the middle for me. Yeah, just took a look at Scott Morell as he was receiving that ball and that was enough for the ball just to squirm from his grasp. I think what Rovers can't do at this stage is panic. There's still, what, 53 minutes of this game remaining. You don't want to see them go three or four scores behind, but while it's only at this scoreline, they still have a chance. They need to come back inside now. Oh, that's poor play. You have to say that's poor play from Rovers just simply shown the touchline on the first tackle bundled into touch the wingman once the play once the angled run is going that way the wingman has got to come back on the inside and well just poor communication yeah I think McDonald did the right thing he took the first man but then he just couldn't get himself back inside a few boos from the people over there in the east end so I'm wondering whether he's actually hit the deck on the air on the touchline or over it but he has as far as the officials are concerned, so that's another another turnover ball for Rovers. Encouraging that they're getting all the ball to actually turn the ball over, Rob, but just, they just need to complete a few more sets now. 
That's the second week running that Shannon McDonald's been bundled in to touch on the first tackle. So whatever the uh, the set move is, needs some more work on the training ground. Rovers though still trailing by 12. They can't afford to turn over possession on the first tackle because the Giants now with Danny Bruff are causing havoc. He offloads to Filongo. It's back inside to David Fayumu, the substitute utility man, and there's a high shot. Swinging arm, say Steve Ganson. Will Huddersfield go for the two, or will they look to apply the pressure? I think Huddersfield do have the advantage of a breeze in this first half. So they're looking to apply some more pressure to that Rovers defensive line. Here is Michael Lawrence once again, looking to atone for that mistake a few moments ago. Huddersfield are stacked up on the short side. Rovers need to be really careful here. Tommy Lee elects to go the other way. Scott Grick steps. Reese Lovegrove, he's on from the bench. He completes the tackle just seven metres out. They've switched the play once again. Kevin Brown had two red and white shirts quickly upon him. That's the way to defend against Kevin Brown in that sort of position. Grick's teasing once again. Josh Hodgson shoots out. That creates a gap for Danny Bruff. Lincoln Withers did well to close the door but still the Giants have tackles in the bank Fayumu, oh there's a chance now out wide Luke George takes the pass, forward pass say Steve Ganson, Luke George thought he had his second try of the game Steve Ganson just saves Rovers Bacon there probably was a metre forward but so often in these games the referees allow them to stand yeah, he's given the forward pass, Rob, but it wasn't the forward pass that created the overlap yet again, was it? It was it was just simple numbering up. Um, Rovers have got out of jail there. They're getting plenty of let off so far, Rob, considering how many points that Huddersfield have put on early doors. They're getting let off a couple of times, so they need to turn this into at least territory and hopefully points. Just clearing their end now. Hopefully we'll see a penalty come Rovers way in the, in the near future. I don't think we've actually had one yet, have we? No, you may be right there as Mickey Payer just added some pace and drive into that Rovers attack then the 10 metres from the halfway line Huddersfield employing this wrestle tactic which these the likes of Michael Maguire and Nathan Brown introduced to the European Super League Dobson now needs to take on the line more for me Huddersfield are standing off him and that may just allow him to just jink his way through a gap Morel this time goes to the sky lots of height Good take though. Oh, and what a counter attack. The fullback Greg Eden. Well, they lost Hodgson to, to Warrington a couple of years ago. Many felt, how would they plug that gap? Many thought it would be Leroy Kudjo, but this youngster looks very accomplished. He does, Robert. It's a really great take, and he was running while he was in the air, so as soon as he hit the deck, he was off. But the, the pressure was there from Rovers. They just didn't want to hit him as he caught the ball and as he came to the ground, so. Again, it's there for Rovers to take if they want to. Offload out the back door, Greg Eden steps, steps again, through the gap, long ball out wide, forward pass. Joe Wardle thought he was on for a stroll to the try line. So Rovers escape twice in the matter of minutes. It's a good job, Dan, because uh, if these passes were going the right side, Rovers would be out of this game by now. Yeah, we said about Greg Eden, didn't we? Again, that was him going through there. Had a bit of a wobble early on. Rovers hadn't really done anything to try and knock him off his game as yet. But, um, yeah, there was a man on the inside, I think, if he'd have known he was there. He was the, that was the ball. Tried to go for the spectacular rather than just taking the tackle. And, and luckily for Rovers, Mr Ganson saw it as a forward pass. Rovers need to stay in the arm wrestle. We have just under eight minutes remaining of the first half. Reese Lovegrove sets off, just powers into the two-man tackle. Jason Chan, a man who, in my opinion, shouldn't be out there today. He's out there now wearing 18 for the Giants. He was a chicken wing last week, which should have got a suspension as Rovers just go to the short pass to Josh Hodgson. But they're on the last. They've made good metres in this set. Oh, Chris Wellen picks up the ball, kicks ahead. Surely he was obstructed. Penalty to the Robins. Had he just gone one-on-one -on -one then and found the winger, Rovers would have scored. I think wrong decision from Wellham is 
got the penalty, however. And if Rovers can get six points before half-time, Dan, who knows, they may just manage to force the way back in this game. Yeah, I was, I was screaming at him for kicking again, Rob. Just a bit of composure lacked in the, in the final 10 and 20 metres. There's points there for the Robins. They're not looking to crash out on the outside either. Mickey Payer just stands his ground. It was a difficult pass to take, that one. Withers now. Oh, he's linked with Dobson. There's a chance for Dobson. He ducks his head and goes for the line. Eventually spun round. And he plays the ball a metre shy of the try line. Morell. Looking to pick the pass, he links with McDonnell. He drops the pass off to Graham Horn. Horn's a strong lad, but there's three Huddersfield defenders in attendance. But now they have a chance to move the ball from right to left. Morell, short pass, it's Scott Taylor, who was the receiver of that pass from Morell. He's driven back. Rovers really do need a score, you feel. As Withers now links once again, Dobson. Long pass to Hodgson, Hodgson's in for Rovers, that was a fantastic play, Hodgson's in against his former side, and with what, just under six minutes of this first half remaining, Rovers have a lifeline as the winger goes in on that left-hand side, the Robins 10, the Giants 18. Yeah, it's great play from Rovers, you know exactly what they can do, and... They're putting on that, that play um, just a little bit better than Huddersfield did a few moments earlier and, and taking some points off it. Rovers, in, in fairness, Rob, they've got no right to be anywhere near in this game, but they are in it and they've got to take that chance and they've got to make Huddersfield make those errors and, and take the chances when they've got them because they're not going to come along very often. So just what Rovers needed, a pleasing return to the side for David Hodgson following that muscle injury which has forced him out the last three or four games. That's just given a lift to the fans inside MS3 Craven Park once again. And I'm sure the fans over on that east stand are going to will this kick over from Dobson. There's a definite wind advantage at the backs of Huddersfield, so perhaps there's hope for overs going into the second half. If Morell, Dobson and Withers can get the kicking game going Dobson's only around three or four metres in from touch the East Stand will give us a clue as to whether this one's on its way oh what a kick from Dobson if that was into a breeze he absolutely hammered it home and Rovers now do only trail by six points 18-6 is the 18-12 is the advantage to the Giants Important now, with four and a half minutes remaining in this first half, that Rovers just complete this set, get the kick away, and put some pressure on Huddersfield going into half time. Yeah, they can't afford to concede again going in, Rob, because if, uh, if history tells us the second halves haven't been the greatest for Rovers this season, they've been in every game that they've played so far, but they've just tailed off at the back. As Scott Taylor goes on a break, half break, gets his nose through, so there's the creaking a bit, Huddersfield, Rob. And there we go. We said, didn't we, about the penalty count stacking up against Rovers. Rovers got a penalty scored off the back of it. Can they do it again? I think that would be a bit of a shot for, uh, for the Robins and a, a real positive going into the break. Dobson with some decent distance. So Rovers have a set of six. And they're 10 metres now inside the Giants' half of the field. Here comes McDonough, links. With Graham Horn, he tries to step inside the tackle of Kevin Brown. Lovegrove sucks in three defenders. Come on, Rovers, is the cry from the East Stand. Morell wants a runner. Jordan Cox is the runner. Takes one up top, one below to bring him down. Rovers now only 10 metres out. The roof will lift off this stadium if Rovers can get their third try of the game. There's a chance now, there's Wellham, Wellham, Wellham's in! Wellham scores! Third try of the game for the Robins! They've scored two tries in two minutes! Turn this game upside down! They only trail by two. 18-16 with the kick to come, and Huddersfield have gone into their shells. A couple of penalties, and Rovers are right back in this game. Exactly what we're saying, Rob, a bit of a fair crack from the officials, penalty try, 
penalty try. Huddersfield are immune to conceding points, as we've seen three tries already. And Rovers look so much stronger going from right to left. There's just no real movement off the ball when they're going to the other side of the field. I think that's, as Huddersfield have done, stick to that play, keep going that way, and it's paying dividends, isn't it? Well, it's uh, interesting that Huddersfield are targeting the Rovers right. Rovers are certainly targeting the Huddersfield right-hand side. Wellham went in around seven metres from the corner flag, so it's not the easiest of kicks for Dobson. The clock has been stopped with two minutes of this first half remaining. As Dobson now just composes himself, steps up. And the cheers say that that kick has sailed between the posts. 18 all here at MS3 Craven Park. And from a real feeling of despondency, Dan, real optimism now. Absolutely, Rob. Ten minutes ago, Rovers couldn't have been any more eager to get back in those sheds at half-time and regroup. But now, I think it's Huddersfield that want the hooter. Rovers could do with just staying out there and carrying on now. Really, really got the bit between the two. But like we said, Rob, can they pull a second half out of the bag? That's going to be the, the acid test for me. Difficult one to take in the sun is in Rovers' eyes in this first half, but Scott Taylor has really taken the game to Huddersfield. Such a strong man is Taylor. Mickey Payer now. These substitutes, Payer, Taylor, Cox, and Love Grove have really swung the game back Rovers' way. Huddersfield really are uh, scrambling now. Here is Love Grove. Bump, collision, sucks in three defenders every time. Great strength from Reese Lovegrove. Just 50 seconds of the first half remaining. Can Rovers break the Giants down once again? Dobson finds McDonald. Chance for Wellham. David Hodgson. He didn't fancy the outside. He comes back inside. Still a couple of tackles remain. Rovers are 35 metres out. It's with the skipper. It, oh, big shot. File on go on Taylor. Taylor just gets quickly to his feet. And Dobson puts the kick ahead. The chase is on. It looks as though Wellham was being slightly dragged back. That will go dead in goal. And, well, Huddersfield may have chance for perhaps one, two drives down. Yeah, again, I think Dobson would, came up with the wrong option then. He had two or three men outside. Good quick hands. One, one past the rugby would have maybe put the Robins in in the corner. And, but we'll see the half out, Rob, as I say, from ten minutes ago. We're all think, fearing the worst, but I think it's Huddersfield now who are going to be looking at themselves and thinking, how the hell are we not 20, 30 points in front? Because they had it for the taking. The Giants are having a team huddle as they go to leave the field. Rovers have really got the spring in their step now. You wouldn't have thought so the game, the way the first half went, certainly the first 20 minutes or so. The scoring got underway on four minutes of play. Uh, Joe Wardle break down the left-hand side, sent Luke George going in unopposed in the left-hand corner to give the Giants a four-point advantage. Superb conversion from the touchline by Danny Bruff, made it 6-0. Rovers did respond, a high kick from Michael Dobson. Greg Eden took the ball, but the chase from Chris Wellham put him under pressure. He lost the ball behind the post, and Liam Watts was the first man to react. Dobson converted and that six points all, it was a pretty even game perhaps, but then Huddersfield really stepped on the gas. Left hand side attack once again, Joe Wardle and Luke George were involved, Luke, it was Scott Griggs who scampered away for the try. Bruff once again converted from the touchline and the Giants led 12-6. It got worse six minutes later. Following a sustained spell of pressure in the Rovers 20, Greg Eden broke his way through some sloppy defence. He scored, reached over. Bruff once again converted, and at 18-6, Rovers were in deep, deep trouble. The Giants then had a try disallowed from forward passes on 30 and 32 minutes, which perhaps would have taken the game away. But then you have to say the substitutions that Craig Sandercock has made have swung the game back in Rovers' favour. He introduced Cox, Lovegrove, Scott Taylor and Mickey Payer. And in that time on, with those guys on the field, 
Rovers have scored two tries. The first when they move the ball out wide for David Hodgson to cross in the left-hand corner. Dobson with a great conversion. And then just a couple of minutes from half-time, Wellham, the ginger ninja, what a try-scoring machine this guy is. He powered his way over. Dobson with his third conversion of the afternoon. And it's all square at half-time here at MS3 Craven Park as Hulkingston Rovers are level on the scoreboard with the Huddersfield Giants by 18 points apiece.